This video is brought to you by Star Laboratory. In this video, we will be talking about the Juran Analysis Chapter 5. So, if you are not a subscriber, first of all, please subscribe our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. As we discussed earlier, in this wet urine analysis, we are going to include macroscopical and microscopical analysis. So if we take the macroscopical analysis, again we are going to subcategorize into physical and chemical analysis, right? So physical analysis uh, we have already discussed in details. So if we take the chemical analysis, again we are subcategorizing as semi-quantitative and qualitative. So if we take the semi-quantitative, we can include albumin and the reducing substances. So during protein and albumin, uh, we have already discussed in Juran Analysis Chapter 3, right? So today we are going to discuss about the Juran reducing substances. If we take the normal person in the normal conditions, their urine reducing substance is actually negative. That means there is no any reducing substances presented in the normal healthy person's urine sample, right? Under normal circumstances, almost all the glucose filtered by glomerula is reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule in nephrons. So that's why there is no chance of having glucose in the urine sample. But there are some disease conditions makes the test for the urine reducing substances as positive. For example, if we take the glucose that can be presented in the diabetic mellitus patients, right? At the same time, the lactose also a reducing sugar that can be presented in the lactating woman and pregnancies during summer. And if we take the alkaptone urea, the homeogenicity acid that is also a reducing substances that can be presented in their during summer. Then, now let's talk about some disease conditions where the glucose present in the urine, right? So, case one, hyperglycemia. Case 2. Absence of hyperglycemia or renal glycosuria. Then now let's see what is hyperglycemia. If we take the normal person, their renal threshold for glucose is actually 10 millimoles per liter or 180 milligrams per deciliter. But in case of hyperglycemia, the blood sugar level concentration is going to be elevated than the renal threshold level. So that's why the urine sugar is positive. In some people, due to their uncontrolled and bad food habits, due to some medications and due to some abnormalities, their blood sugar concentration is going to be elevated than the reference range, right? So when this sugar concentration is elevated than the renal threshold level, that is, 10 millivolts per liter or 180 milligrams per deciliter, then the proximal convoluted tubules of nephrons in kidneys cannot reabsorb the glucose. So that's why it's going to be released with the urine sample, right? So that's why the Benedict test can give the positive results in diabetic patients as well as in some other conditions. Then now let's talk about the case 2, that is the absence of hyperglycemia. Or renal glycosuria. So this renal glycosuria occurs in the absence of hyperglycemia when the reabsorption of glucose by PCT that means proximal convoluted tubule is impaired. So this condition is known as the renal glycosuria. So that happens due to the lowering of renal threshold for glucose. For example pregnancy and congenital and acquired conditions. Then the next thing is the determination of reducing substances in urine. In the ordinary laboratory, we can perform the following test for the detection of uh, urine sugar as well as the other reducing substances. So first one, the Benedict test is a routine test and more sensitive for the reducing substances easily we can perform in the ordinary laboratory setups. Then the second one is the urine reagent dipstick technique, right? So this urine reagent dipstick technique is very simple, rapid and convenient method and it is having more specificity for glucose test. So that's why this test becomes more popular in nowadays. 
Rather than this, we can use the paper chromatography technique and the ozazone test. But these two tests are rarely done in the laboratory setups in nowadays. Then now let's do the practical on Benedict test for the urine reducing substances. So this Benedict test can be used for the reduction of sugar in urine as well as other reducing substances uh, presented in the urine sample, right? So this is a very simple test we can perform in the ordinary laboratory setups, right? So now let's see what is the principle behind this uh, Benedict test. In this Benedict test, uh, we are using the Benedict solution. So this Benedict solution itself is uh, having the Cg2 plus ions. So this Cg2 plus ions is going to be reduced to Cg plus in the presence of reducing substances. So this Cg2 plus is blue color and Cg plus in red color. But the thing is, we have to maintain the special conditions in this test. For example, we have to maintain the 100 degrees Celsius of boiling for 5 minutes exactly then it is having the alkaline medium so in this medium this reaction can be happened right then the reagent composition so here we have to prepare the benedict uh, working solution so this uh, benedict working solution is going to include three compositions so first one copper sulfate then the second one sodium carbonate and the third one is the sodium citrate here the copper sulfate take part in the reduction Sodium carbonate provides the alkaline medium and the sodium citrate act as a buffer in the solution, right? Then now let's see what are the requirements needed for this Benedict test. Here we need the three boiling tubes. So one is for the positive control, second one is for the negative control and the other one is for the test. Then we need boiling water bath of 100 degrees Celsius. Then pipettes of 0.5 ml and 5 ml. Benedict working solution. Then finally, we need positive control, negative control and the test sample. Okay, now let's go for the method. Firstly, we have to take three boiling tubes and we should label as positive control negative control and test. Then we add 5 ml of Benedict solution into the boiling tubes labeled as positive, negative and test, right? So here I have already added the 5 ml of Benedict solution into the labeled boiling tubes with the help of 5 ml pipette, right? Then we are going to add the Juran sample into the Benedict solution. So let's mix the sample well with along with the container. So here I have already transferred the positive control, negative control and the test sample into the another corn tubes. So now let's measure the 0.5 ml of positive control sample and we have to add into the 5 ml of Benedict solution. So same like this, now let's measure 0.5 ml of negative control sample, then we add into the boiling tube which is labeled as negative control. Then finally, we add 0.5 ml of test sample into the boiling tube which is labeled as test, right? Here the important thing is, we have to always wash the pipettes thoroughly with distilled water each and every instances, otherwise it may give false results. Then now let's gently mix the boiling tube. After that we have to keep the boiling tubes into the boiling water bath at 100 degrees Celsius exactly for 5 minutes. After 5 minutes boiling we have to take out the boiling tubes from the water bath, allow to cool and observe the color and precipitate. Mm -hmm. 
then the results interpretations here we can observe different colors and precipitates according to the presence of different concentration of reducing substances So after the experiment, if it is blue color remains in the boiling tube, that indicates the negative. That means there is no any reducing substances presented in the sample, right? So if it is a green color remains without precipitate, that indicates the trace amount of reducing substances presented in the sample, right? So if we take the amount that is less than 0.5 percentage, that means 0.5 grams per deciliter. So when we are reporting, we can report it as trace, right? So next one, if it is green color with precipitate, that indicates 0.5 percentage nearly, right? So we can give the report it as a plus. Then if it is yellow with precipitate, that indicates nearly equal to one percentage. That means one grams per deciliter. So we can give the report as double plus. Then, if it is orange with precipitate, we can report it as triple plus. That is nearly equal to 1.5 percentage. Then, finally, if it is brick red, it remains with precipitate. That we can report it as 4 plus. So that is nearly greater than 2.0 percentage. Then now let's see what are the reducing sugars. This can gives the positive results. So first one glucose, galactose, fructose, maltose, lactose and pentose sugars can gives the positive results with this Benedict solution, right? Then the false positive reactions. That means without glucose these also can gives the positive results. For example, ascorbic acid or vitamin C, homeogenicity acid it's also a reducing substance, then uric acid and creatinine. Then the note point, if the protein present in the large amount in the sample, it may interfere with the precipitate. So that also can interfere the results. So to overcome this problem, we can use 6 percentage salposalicylic acid and we can do the experiment again. So that's all for today friends. After watching this video, please give a like, leave your comments and share it to your friends. If you are not a subscriber, please subscribe our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Thank you.